So now for the ears, you're going to use your four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to need four triangles. They're all made the same way. I'm going to show you how to make them. You're going to need two of them to be the white colored yarn and then two of them are going to be the yarn that you used for the main color of your dog. So if you had a black dog, it would be the black colored yarn. On video, I'm using my carrot colored yarn for my dog, so the two back portion of the ear triangle will be with this color. So I'm going to show you how to make the triangle for the ear using the white yarn. But you're going to end up making two white and then two in the main color for your dog. So the first thing you're going to do is just take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your four millimeter crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain. You're going to make a chain of 15, but I'm only going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. This is what mine looks like after making a chain of 15. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. And you're going to bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of 14. So one single crochet in every stitch back across, and again, that will give you a stitch count of 14. And then come back. Then, when you reach the end, you're going to go ahead and chain one, turn your work. That first chain counts as your first stitch. So then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you'll see that this first chain one counts as your first stitch and then this second single crochet is your second stitch and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and again you're going to have a stitch count of 14 because you made that initial chain one and when you reach the end go ahead and come back so this will count as our second row. So we finished one and this will be our second row. So this is what my work looks like so far. far. And again, that's going to count as our second row that we just finished. And it's a stitch count of 14. We're going to make a total of six rows with a stitch count of 14. So go ahead and chain one. Turn your work, and again, you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. So this will be your third row of one single crochet in every stitch across with a stitch count of 14. So you're going to keep repeating this until you have a total of six rows of stitch count of 14, and then come back. So this is what my work looks like after completing the sixth row of the 14 stitches in each row. Now, after you finish that last stitch on the sixth row, you're not going to chain one, you're just going to turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over. bring up a loop and make your single crochet. 
Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and because you didn't make that chain one you should have a stitch count of 13 for this row when you're finished. So go ahead finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across and again your stitch count will be 13. Then we're going to make one more row with a stitch count of 13 so at the end of this row you are going to make your chain one. So go ahead and make your chain one. Turn your work and again you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. So that will be your second stitch and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you're finished with this row you're again going to have a 13 stitch count. So now you just finished that row. So you have two rows now with a 13 stitch, stitch count. Now you're not going to chain one and you're going to turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into that next stitch over and then one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you're finished with this row you're going to have a stitch count of 12. So when you get to the end, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So again, this row will be a stitch count of 12. So now, after you finish that row with a stitch count of 12, we're going to make two more rows with a stitch count of 12. So what you're going to do is you're going to chain one turn your work. So that first chain one counts as your first stitch. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet. And then again you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across for a stitch count of 12. So this is our second row with a stitch count of 12. And again we want a total of three. So go ahead and finish your third row. Actually just finish your second row. I'll meet up and then help you finish your third row with a stitch count of 12. Okay, so you should have finished your second row with a stitch count of 12. Then all you do is you chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and again one single crochet in every stitch back across for your last row, your third row with a stitch count of 12. Okay, so now that was the last row where you're, not, you're going to be chaining one. So now for the rest of the tip of the triangle, you're no longer going to be chaining one. So you're just going to take, after you finish your last single crochet, turn your work, go into the next stitch over, make your single crochet, and then one single crochet in every stitch across. When you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 11. Then you're just going to turn your work after you finish your last single crochet, work into the next stitch over, make a single crochet, and you're going to have a stitch count of 10. And you're going to keep doing this consecutively all the way down to 1. So in other words, this row will have 10, the next one will have 9, then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And what you're doing is you're forming the tip of the triangle for the dog's ear. And you'll notice that the sides will slant in like they're doing already to form the tip of the triangle. So again, I'm finishing my last single crochet. I'm just going to turn my work, work into the next stitch for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8 and 9. So now when I turn my work, work into the next stitch, one single crochet, I will have a stitch count of 8. So go ahead, finish your triangle, and when you get down to 1, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So I just finished my stitch count of two. This is what my work looks like so far. Perfect triangle for the ear. Then I'm going to take and turn my work. And then for the last stitch, I'm just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So you just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then again, you're going to need two of these with the white colored yarn and then two of the triangles in whatever color that you chose for your dog. So after you finish making the pieces for your ears, we're going to crochet the two pieces together. So go ahead and get your main color, which your main color is going to be on the back, and then place the white colored yarn on top. And then I usually take the two loose yarn inside and then just tie a knot. This will get tucked into the inside of the ear when you're finished. Then you're just going to line up. You can even tie a knot for the tip of the ear. Then you're just going to take your four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to go through a stitch on the white portion of the ear and then the back color of the ear. And then you're going to bring up a loop with your same colored yarn that you used for the main color of your dog. Go ahead and chain one and then just tie a knot Then you're ready to crochet up the side of the ear to the point. The first thing you're going to do is chain two. That's going to count as your first half double crochet. Then you're just going to make one half double crochet in each stitch across the side to the point of the ear. So the first thing you're going to do is just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make sure that you're grabbing the back part of the ear. You're crocheting the two pieces together. So now you have three loops on the hook. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three loops to complete a half double crochet. And then you're just going to space evenly one half double crochet in every stitch to the tip of the ear and you're basically just crocheting the two pieces of the triangle portion of the ear together. So one half double crochet evenly spaced all the way up to the tip of the ear. Make sure that the triangle stays together as you crochet up the ear. When you reach the tip of the ear, the point of the ear, come back and I'll show you what I did for the top portion of the ear. So this is what mine looks like so far and I've reached the tip of the ear. This is what it looks like on the other side. So now in the tip of the ear I'm going to place two half double crochet into the same stitch. So two half double crochet into that top tip of the ear. 
Then you just continue down the opposite side. So go into the next stitch and just make a half double crochet in every stitch down the opposite side. So the only difference is I made two half double crochet into the same stitch on the point only. So just in the tip of the ear. So this is what my ear looks like. And I've just finished my last half double crochet on the end. I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the back orange portion because the front of the ear you're going to use the white colored yarn to sew the front. This is what it looks like on the back. And then you're just going to do the same thing with the other ear. So after you finish making your ears, go ahead and set them aside for now. You're not going to sew them on yet. We're going to finish the body first. Now for the body, I'm not going to show you again how to make the body because it's made the exact same way as the head. So you're going to start the body the exact same way as the head and you're going to increase the number of stitches in the round the exact same way. The only difference between the head and the body is that the head I stopped after an increase of one single crochet into 10 stitches and then two single crochet into the 11th stitch. The body I made slightly larger so I kept increasing for two more rounds. So it ended up with one single crochet into 12 stitches and then two single crochet into the 13th stitch. Then for the head I made one single crochet into every stitch around for 30 rounds. For the body you're going to make 52 rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 52 rounds. So I've already started and so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds for the body. But I'm going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch around just like I did for the head except I'm going to stop after 52 rounds. So go ahead, start making your body, and after you finish making your 52 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, come back and I'll show you how to close the body. After you finish your 52 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, now you're ready to start stuffing it and closing it, but I'm not going to stuff it until I get the opening closed a little bit more, and I'll let you know when I start to stuff mine. But I just wanted to show you that this also works as a baby cocoon. So it also turns into a gorgeous baby cocoon and you can put your favorite applique on the front. So the first thing you're going to do is just take your yarn marker and move it up and then you're going to make one single crochet into 12 stitches for the first decrease round. One single crochet into 12 stitches then you're going to make your decrease stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into 12 stitches and then make your decrease stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker Then. For the next decrease round, you're going to be moving up your yarn marker and you're going to be going down by one. So the next one will be one single crochet into 11 stitches and then your decrease stitch. And we're going to be working consecutively, so it'll go down from 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, all the way down to one. And then we're going to close. So I'll show a, a few of them with you. And some people like to have the stitch count, even though for this part you don't have to be exact as long as you're pretty close. So that last stitch count was a 78 for the 12, one single crochet and 12 and then the decrease. Now I'm on my next decrease round of one single crochet into 11 and then my decrease stitch. So the last round, decrease round, was um, a total of 72 stitches 
and then I moved my yarn marker up for the next decreased round which of course will be one single crochet into 10 since our previous one was 11 and the previous one before that was 12 so one single crochet into 10 stitches and then your decreased stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker okay so now you're ready for the next decrease round and if you haven't noticed I just want to point out to you that for the first round we had 78 stitches then we had 72 and then we decreased to 66 so this next round which will be one single crochet into nine stitches and then a decrease stitch you can already tell by the pattern that it's going to be six stitches less than the previous row so I just wanted to point that little trick out to you that each row decreases by six stitches so now you should be able to go ahead and close all the way down to one single crochet into three stitches just keep working in order so again we started with 12 and then 11 10 9 and then you're going to go on to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. When you get to one single crochet into three stitches and then your decreased stitch, come back. So now this is what my opening looks like for the body. And I'm down to one single crochet into three stitches and then my decrease stitch. But before I finish this round, I'm going to go ahead and take my craft stuffing and use it for the body. So for anybody that's new and hasn't watched some of my prior videos, I like to use a pillow and I usually get my pillow from Walmart for under three dollars instead of paying for the expensive craft stuffing at the craft stores so it's the same polyester fill but it's significantly cheaper then you're able to stuff use the stuffing to stuff more of your crocheted dogs for a lot cheaper Now before closing, you're going to decide if you want to use your doll joints for the legs or not at this point. But first we need to make the legs. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So whether you're making the dog with the doll accessories or not, if you're going to be uh, making it without the doll accessories, you could go ahead and close it, or you can just wait, uh, whichever, it's, it doesn't matter whichever, but the ones using the doll accessory joints, go ahead and set your body aside for now, because we need to make the legs so I'm going to show you how to do that. The legs, all of the legs, I use the same pattern to make them. So we're going to use the same pattern for all four of your dog legs. Okay, so for the dog legs, you're going to be using your four millimeter crochet hook. Go ahead and get your white yarn. We're going to start with the magic circle. So go ahead and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Whoops. Let me do that again. So cross the four fingers, thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around the two middle fingers. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take and go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two,
and there's six. So six single crochet into the magic circle, then hold the base of the six single crochet, and then you have those two loops. Go ahead and pull, and again, if it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. Just gently close it. Then take and pull on that loose yarn end. Then turn your work to work into the first stitch in the round. And we're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until we have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So go ahead and finish two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now you can take and close the center of the magic circle. Just turn it over and gently pull on that loose yarn end on the back. Closes it up nicely. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and we're going to start making our increase rounds, meaning that we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. Okay, so now you're already an expert at increasing, so you know that it's going to increase by six stitches now for each round. And we're going to work consecutively all the way up to one single crochet into six stitches, and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. So again, we're working in order. We just did one single crochet in one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So now consecutively the next one would be one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then the next round would be one single crochet into three and then four and then five and then the last round one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch and then come back. So I just finished my last increase round of one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch and this is what my work looks like so far. You should have finished with 48 stitches in the round. Now you are going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for only one round and then come back. Then after you finish that one round of one single crochet in every stitch go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to make 12 decrease stitches. So I'm going to make the first couple with you you go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. So that's your first one. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for your second. and then your third. And you're going to keep repeating this until you've finished 12 of them. So this is my fourth. Go ahead, finish 12 decrease stitches or single crochet two stitches together 12 times and then come back. So then after you finish the 12 decrease stitches, you can see how I turned it so that the wrong side with the loose yarn end is on the inside. Then I'm going to go ahead and continue by making one single crochet in every remaining stitch. So one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker and then come back. So now you should have finished 36 stitches in the round after making the 12 decrease stitches. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up because you're going to make only one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. Okay. 
Then after you finish the one single crochet in every stitch around, go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up. And this time you're going to only make nine decrease stitches or nine single crochet two stitches together. So here's my first one. I'm just going to make one more with you. And then go ahead and finish making nine decrease stitches and then come back. This is what my work will look like after making the nine decrease stitches. You're making a nice forefoot. Then go ahead and finish just by making one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. So you should have 27 stitches now after finishing that last decrease round. Then you're just going to move your yarn marker up and again you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you can go ahead and put a little craft stuffing into the foot. This is what your work should look like so far. Try not to overstuff it because where you made the decrease stitches you might have huge openings for the crochet. So just kind of a little bit to kind of form the foot. Then just take and move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed 35 rounds. So 35 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So for my black Siberian Husky I went ahead and made the leg all white and then closed it. But if you want to you can add a little color to the top of your leg and to do that I'm just going to show you I stopped on round 27 and you can stop wherever you want to add the color. Usually a Siberian Husky color change is towards the top of the leg. So if you want to do this then go ahead and make your color change towards the back. So go ahead finish making one single crochet in every stitch on the round and then when you get to the back of the paw come back and I'll show you how I added color to mine. So I'm using the same color as the main color for my dog and I'm in the back of my paw and then I'm going to go ahead and go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to go ahead and take and bring the yarn through both loops then I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Then I'm just going to set my work down and tie a knot. Then you can go ahead and cut the white colored yarn or the last yarn that you were using. And then we're going to start crocheting with our new color and then you just continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you've completed your 35 rounds. So now I've finished 35 rounds total. And if you're using the doll joint, this is where you're going to set this down for now because we need to make the little square that goes in the inside to make the doll joint. So now I'm going to show you how to close without the doll joint. So if you don't want to use the doll joints for your dog, then I'm going to show you the other method. So for the other method, you still make it up to the same point, so 35 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. Then you're going to get your yarn marker 
place it right where you left off and then we're going to start our decrease rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Oh, also make sure that you're stuffed well. And then if you need, as you're closing, you can add a little bit more stuffing. Then you're going to go ahead and make your decrease stitch. Go ahead and yarn over. You have two loops now. Go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for your decrease stitch. Go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So I finished with my decrease stitch, and then I'm going to go ahead and take and move my yarn marker up. And for this round, decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then you're going to make one single crochet and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern around and you can see how you're getting smaller and smaller I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit, little bit more craft stuffing in mine then you can go ahead and just make decrease stitches until you can't make decrease stitches anymore in the round. I'm almost close. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch close. So I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And then I need just one more to close mine, but you keep doing that until yours is closed. Then once it's closed, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Just take your tapestry needle, put it onto that loose yarn end, and then you're just going to go right in where you tied your knot, or you finished off, and then I like to go a second time through. Then I'm just going to go ahead and take and trim the loose yarn end. And then all of the paws are made the same way, so you'll need four of them for this method as well. So now I have all four of my legs, and like I said, some of you may have changed colors towards the top of your paws or legs and that's fine you would just use wherever your level so the level that you're going to sew your leg onto the dog is about starting from the magic circle about one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so close to ten rounds is where you're going to be going through the leg and through the dog body so if wherever you're going through, if it's black at that area, you would use your black yarn. Mine is completely white, so I'll be using my white yarn to sew the legs onto the dog. So my black Siberian Husky has been waiting for his legs. So I'll be showing you how to sew the head on with the carrot colored dog on video tutorial. I'm just showing those that use the different method without the doll joints how you would sew the legs on. So don't worry, I'll be showing you later how to sew the head on and make the decoration under the belly, all that stuff. So for now, I'm just showing you how you would sew the legs on using the method without the doll joint. So you would get two of your paws. I'm going to show you the front legs first. Go ahead and get your yarn onto your tapestry needle, and in my case I'm using my white yarn. Make sure that you have a long amount. It's better to have too long than too short, because I like to double. If I'm using this method, I like to go through twice to make sure that it's a strong hold for the legs. Now you're going to take and make sure that your paws are facing forward and you get an idea of where you want to have the legs onto the dog and the body. And then once you know where you want to have the legs go on the body, then you're going to take the first leg, and again, the paw is very important, make sure you have it facing the right direction. And then you're going to go directly onto the side 
of the leg and you want to go right in the center of one of the crochet holes. So again, here's the magic circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So directly under the tenth round is where I went through and I'm making sure I'm right on the side and I'm going to go at the same level go through the leg and out the opposite side and again I'm coming through the center of one of the crochet holes exactly on the opposite side then you can go ahead and bring the yarn through and leave enough yarn on the other side for tying a knot. Then you're going to go ahead and line up the leg with your crochet dog. So you want to make sure that the leg is exactly where you want it. And then once you know about where you would like to have the hole go into the body, go ahead and hold it with your finger and then you take your tapestry needle and you go right into that part of the body and come out on the opposite side. So you're going to take and make sure you come out the same area on the opposite side so you can count the rounds. So here you can see my magic circle in the front. So I have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So right after the 28th round, and that's exactly where I want to come out at the same level on the opposite side. So you can see where I came out on the opposite side. All I did was just squish the body together and then brought the tapestry needle through. You want to be very careful that you don't poke yourself. And then you just bring the yarn through. And then you want to leave about an inch or two. I usually leave about an inch, about two inches. And then you're going to take the other leg Make sure that you have the paw facing forward. I can't stress that enough. And then you're just going to count down the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then exactly through the center of one of the crochet holes, I'm going to go through to the opposite side. And again, I'm going to leave about an inch to two, two inches, an inch to two inches between the body and the leg. Then you can go usually in a um, four stitch diameter. Let me just show you. So here is one. So anywhere in this four stitch diameter of where I came out is where I'm going to stay meaning I'm going to go about a stitch over to go back through. So I'm going right in the center of one of the crochet holes right next to where I came out and then I'm going to come out around about a stitch over from where I came out in through to go out to the other side and then bring the yarn back through and then you're going to do the same thing on the body. You're going to go to about a stitch over and then go back through the body and then bring the yarn through. Then you're going to take, this is what it looks like on this side. So you can see I have two strands on this side. And then I'm going to go right back through the leg on the opposite side.
And then I'm going to repeat this whole process one more time. So I'll have four strands on both sides. So then this is what my work looks like so far. I have the four strands there and then the four strands on this side. And now I'm just going to take and pull on both strands of yarn. Make sure you are careful that you don't pull it too hard where it snaps your yarn. And then you may need to pull on one at a time as well. So as soon as you have it secure and pulled as tightly that you, as you want, with the legs as tightly pulled to the body as you want, you're going to go ahead and tie a knot. And again, don't pull it so tight that you snap your yarn, because then you'll have to start again. So then you can see how the leg will move up and down on both sides. So I really like this method too, and this is the method that I usually use for my dogs. And then you, you put on the back legs the exact same way. Just make sure that the legs are lined up. And again, make sure your paws are facing in the right direction. Then you would take your loose yarn ends and put it onto your tapestry needle. Just go right through where you finished or you tied a knot and then just bring it out. And then if I have enough yarn, sometimes I'll go through for a second pass, but I cut these a little short. So I'm just going to trim the loose yarn ends and that's how you bury the loose yarn ends. So you can see how I made the back legs equal with the front legs on both sides and they move back and forth just like the front legs and then your dog can sit up for some of my dogs I like to get the cute pet outfits and I always like to get the soft furry ones this one I got from my black Siberian Husky and it's a medium sized pet outfit from Bond Company. Mine zippers up the back of the dog and then you can fold the collar down. So this is a medium sized one. I'm not sure what the large one would look like. And then the collar will sit on top of the folded down collar. I mean the folded down outfit and then I have the tags that will hold that will come down in the front. So I really like this outfit for my black Siberian Husky. 